Hello, Brad here with The Guitologist, and in this video, we're going to take a look at this very unusual uh, 1960s series filament amplifier. Uh, this one is labeled Samson. Uh, it has a single, uh, what I believe is an 8-inch speaker in it. Um, it's covered in a black leatherette. Uh, it has a plastic handle like we've seen on some other amplifiers that are familiar to us. But what's unusual about this particular amplifier, first off, it claims to be from, made by Midwest Musical Instrument Company in Effingham, Illinois, uh, 62401. That's up near Chicago, Effingham is. I've driven past Effingham uh, quite a lot in my youth, uh, visiting family in Chicago, so I know about where Effingham is. Um, but uh, I've never heard of Midwest Musical Instrument Company before. Uh, this one has three inputs, volume and a tone with the on-off switch on the tone knob. Uh, it also has a schematic down here, and let's get this back door off and we'll take a look at the schematic. And we'll see what makes this thing uh, a little bit unusual. Okay, here we are with the back door off, and the back door, by the way, is made of plywood, so this is kind of one of the earlier student uh, model amplifiers that uh, they were actually building out of real plywood, so it's, it's plywood all the way around. The tube complement is an 18GD6A, a 60FX5, and a 36AM3. Now this is a bit confusing, I'm assuming the 60FX5 is the is probably some kind of pentode amplifier. Uh, I'm also assuming the 18GD6 is the preamp tube and uh, the 36 volt tube over here is probably the rectifier. Uh, this one, because this one has actually three elements inside, that has almost got to be the rectifier. So, um, unusual, very highly unusual set of tubes for a series filament amp. Uh, usually we see something more like a, you know, a 50, a 50C5 and a you know, 35W4 or stuff like that. But uh, this is a really unusual tube complement. Uh, we can look at the schematic down here that will reveal a little bit more information about this thing. It looks like at one time we had the serial number or something down here perhaps. But look at what this says. This says, this amplifier has been inspected for electrical safety and is multiple listed by Underwriter Laboratories for the Barden Company as model number 803-C. Very unusual. Never heard of the Barden Company either. But there's our UL insignia. Here's all the parts that are inside. And it talks up, up up at the top there about how it's licensed under United States patents by AT&T. Yada, yada, yada that we see so often on these old amplifiers. Let's see if we can get any more information off of that. Yeah, that's just the license notice. And I assume that says 80, model number 803C right there at the top as well. But here's the schematic. And let's see if we can get a good shot of this because... This is probably the only schematic anyone will ever see of this model. So let's see if we can get a pretty good shot of it for this video. There we go. You see we do indeed have the three inputs. The uh, We have a pentode preamp, this pentode output, and this is indeed, looks like a three element rectifier so very interesting design but I'll show you uh, other than the, the uh, design itself and the tube complement I will show you why I chose to make a video of this little thing a um, couple reasons I've never seen any of these names I've never seen the Barden company I've never seen um, Midwest musical instrument and I've never seen Samson that I recall at least I'm, I may have seen Samson but that's the only one that rings a bell. Now let's see what we have here. 33A. Yeah, that code doesn't mean much to me. It looks like there's a faded code there as well. But we have an attached transformer and this is 1966, 35th week. A 
1966. Uh, but I really wanted to show you this because uh, this thing is a little firecracker and sounds really kick-ass. Um, let's let's take a listen to what this thing sounds like, and I haven't done anything to it. Uh, we may also crack it open and take a look at the guts uh, to try to determine for sure who built this thing. But, I mean, I have to take their word for it and guess that Midwest Musical Instrument Company in Effingham, Illinois, did manufacture it. Uh, it could have also, I suppose, been the, the Barden Company. But I have also seen this exact schematic layout with the schematic over here, uh, the tube complement, and also the parts list uh, out here to the left uh, with all this information um, by amplifiers built by, the, uh, by Radionic Industries in Chicago. So a bit of a confusing conundrum little amplifier okay, here. Okay, before we go any further on the Samson, I thought this might uh, be instructive and present a really unique opportunity to take a look at two identical amplifiers side by side in different cabinets. Uh, these are exactly the same amplifier built into two totally different cabinets, uh, two totally different, uh, not manufacturers, but, but two totally different um, distributors, I guess as you might call them. Again, this is the Samson, but if we look over here at this True Tone, distributed by Western Auto, uh, you can see completely different cosmetics. This one is also built entirely of plywood. Really unique design. But the exact same amplifier, once again. Uh, we have three inputs, a volume and a tone with the on-off switch on the tone knob. Exactly like we saw on the Samson amplifier. Now again, this one said a Midwest Musical Instruments company Effingham, Illinois, but that does not say that it was manufactured by Midwest Musical Instruments Company. My guess is that is the distributor. They were probably a distributor. They slapped their Samson logo on this thing. Uh, they had it built to their specifications uh, as far as the cabinetry, and they sold it under their own brand name, whereas Western Auto sold something that was a little more funky under the True Tone brand name. Uh, you can see this handle here. This is very reminiscent of the ones that we see on K amplifiers from this same era. This kind of has a, a bit of a, a faux leatherette covering. A really cool grill cloth. Uh, this one also has a faux leatherette covering, but it's, it's a different kind of covering. Um, but again, we will see the schematic on the back here. And uh, anything look familiar? You see how it has the parts list over on the left. Down at the bottom here, it actually says the model number is 9528D uh, in the Underwriter Laboratory uh, certification. And it has a file number as well. At the top, the model number is also listed up there at the very top, 9528D. Has all the licensing information, the exact same parts list, and the exact same schematic with the exact same tube complement. Uh, this one has a little more, a little more complete bottom, and we can see this JJ. There's actually a number under there as well. I'm not sure what that is, unless it's a serial number. But the exact same amplifier from two completely different distributors. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb here and guess that this is that both of these were made by the same manufacturer. I think that pretty much is evident. Uh, who that manufacturer is, I believe, is uh, Radionic Industries, and that is a name that appears on some of the K amplifiers uh, as a manufacturer. If you look at some of the K-made amplifiers from this same era, as we see there, the same exact tube complement in this true tone, uh, you will see uh, a manufacturer listed of Radionic Industries out of Chicago. And I believe that is the manufacturer responsible for uh, these two amplifiers that are once again distributed by different companies but yet made by the same manufacturer. So this is kind of a less, an opportunity to have a little bit of a lesson in the way the 1960s worked in terms of manufacturing and distribution. 
and it's actually very much the same as it is now. How many times have you gotten uh, guitars that were made by the same manufacturer in China, but with different logos slapped on them? Or the same manufacturer in Japan from the 1960s with the exact same logos, or different logos rather, uh, slapped on them. Uh, but that just goes to show how, uh, you know, some of this stuff, um, you know, gets distributed, gets manufactured, and, and it was the same in the 1960s. Uh, but we're going to use actually this opportunity to listen to both of these amplifiers side by side and see which one uh, might sound better than the other. Um, to my ear, they sound very, very similar, but uh, maybe you can tell me, chime in in the comments and tell me which one you think. Let's listen to both. Okay, let's check out these two amps and uh, compare and contrast, and we're going to use a Telecaster for the purpose. Thank you. 
tone if you were to slap a microphone in front of that and uh, and record with it it probably sound pretty good pretty good on tape <laughs> industries made uh, series filament amplifiers hope you've enjoyed this video if you haven't already done so please hit the subscribe button to subscribe below and for now y'all take care